It's pretty cool. But let's talk about your time with uh, with Team USA. The boys over there come under quite a bit of fire here in the last month uh, uh, from a lot of different spots. But tell me, tell me about your experience being there, doing that, instead of me just starting to blab as someone from the outside. What was that experience like for you? I mean, it was obviously a great experience. Like the whole time, got to go out, go to new country, go to, go up in Canada, Canada. Well, during the week of the NHL finals, so the whole yeah. city was bumping up in Edmonton, so a lot to do up there. Obviously, we had to be smart. Had a lot of underage guys on the team being U22, so we had to keep that in because Canada, a lot of stuff you can do up there that you can't do here. So yep. it was a lot about staying focused all week for sure, like going throughout. Then obviously, this first time I played three games in 12 days ever, that was Damn. my body definitely took the toll on that one. But I feel great now, which is obviously coming out of healthy was for the college guys who were on team were probably the biggest outcome everyone wanted besides so winning. Not only there were uh, some guys that weren't college players, you're talking like, because it's U20, so like you still had some, some high school guys in that roster? Yeah, yeah, basically I would consider everyone that's either senior, freshman, or sophomore. But we had a couple guys rolled out before first game against Panama because of their age restrictions. Really? Basically what it was, we had... Charles, which was the director, basically sent the roster weeks before to the IFAF, which was the International Federation of American Football. They cleared that roster, but then we had a couple guys get up. It was supposed to be our starting quarterback, and three-star Bryce Williams both got rolled out right before the game. Yeah. It basically went made our roster go from 36 to 34, which is already supposed to be a 45-man roster, but a lot of guys had passport issues. Like, I almost was able not to play because I had to get an emergency passport appointment because it's just not something U.S. kids do right away. Yeah, No, 100%. I'm, I totally get you there. Now, what was your first impression uh, you show up for that that practice one or whatever when it comes to, like, the skill level of the guys that you were playing with, even though there were only, what, 34, 35 other uh, dudes on that squad? What was your impression of uh, the skill level with those guys? I mean, everyone definitely was there to get better. Obviously, there's, like, we're not sending Arch Manning over stuff like that. Like I know Patrick <laughs> has to be on that. Don't, don't worry. We heard that all week, but we were out there too. But I mean, a lot of guys, we we're, we're the ones that made the commitment. And I mean, I would say the majority of the roster was D1, D2 guys, but like D1 committed or going D2. Then obviously then Matt Jung, which was a D3 all American last year on D3 football. He was probably our best defensive player. Okay. But then just roster wise, like I had to play a little defense just because, you had 34 guys and Dude, yeah. I haven't played consistent defense probably since junior year of high school, but I'm like, you gotta be a special teams contributor contributor too. So I'm like, this is just more tackling reps for me, reading holes. It's like going down on kickoff. It's just another way to do it. So I'm like, and my yeah. linebacker coach for USA was actually at Roosevelt the year before. So we already had that connection. Okay. It was a cool experience. Just that. No, but everyone was there to get better. I won't say there was like quote bad players. Like some people were saying it was. Yeah. 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 Just, I think that's the impression from the outside, right? Is like there's there's some guys that like just get in there for whatever odd reason. And, and like you said, it's not like we took uh, the AP, FBS, first team All-Americans and sent that group over there. But at the same time, this group is not full of slouches, right? These are all dudes who are like really passionate about this. And you think of the age group too. Um, it's a U20 team. You're not sending over these fifth and sixth year COVID guys that have been in college uh, for, again, six, seven years yeah. going on their, their last year of eligibility. So I think that has to, people forget to take that into account for sure. Uh, what'd you take out of that trip? You said three games, 12 days. What'd you learn and through that process, especially when it comes to taking care of your body? Because that is... In the American football perspective, that's ridiculous. I mean, so me personally at Roosevelt, I was a redshirt the last season, so I didn't yeah. quite have that game. Basically, it was my first time game action since senior year. Yeah. So then going thrown in the fire like that, I think I was I, – I just kept thinking about what my head coach said to me and other coaches on Roosevelt staff. They're like, make sure you stay healthy during it. I was probably in the training room every single day possible. Just so we, I'll say our trainers, world-class for U20s. They're probably some of the best trainers in my career. They kept everyone very healthy. Um, then other stuff I really took away from it. Man, football has gotten better across the globe. It's not like 10 years. Like people are like, how'd you lose to Japan? I'm like, Japan got guys like, I'm like almost want to text our coach about type thing. Like, <laughs> That's these, awesome. are some, yeah. these are some dudes, dude. Like I faced like Juliet, Juliet Catholic in high school, powerhouse Illinois, St. Francis, Illinois powerhouse. I'm like. Man, this they, they look like a JV team compared to what I just played. I was like blown away almost. Then you had Panama. Panama had 
they I won't even call them really a bad team, but they were just unexperienced, which you saw. But Japan, they have leagues over there. Austria, they have a pro league over there too. So and I'm like, so one of the Japan guys was actually is gonna be a D1 player with one of the players that's just gonna be D1 on our team. So they like talk to each other. That was like cool experience. They started trading jerseys, stuff like that. That's so sweet. like from the outside, it's like a lot of crap getting thrown. Like I think you got Tyreek Hill even saying stuff about it, but then like when you're experiencing, I'm like, man, it was a great experience. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, now you get to be on the outside looking in at the uh, Team USA basketball team that needs to hold off South Sudan on a buzzer beater, and then apparently just had a really close run in with like Germany. Um, yeah, and, man. yeah, I saw that. Right. So now you're like, I, I gotta admit, part of me is happy seeing that. I'm like, dude, we're not the only one. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That's what up. I'm saying. Yeah, we're sending over the literal dream team when it comes to the NBA, and these guys are still in uh, some pretty close match with these guys. It's uh, get the monkey off your back, uh, so to speak. That's awesome. Um, now, this doesn't mess with your NCAA eligibility at all, right? So what kind of hoops did you just jump through to do that? Was just working with your compliance officer at your school? Yeah. What did that entail? So I, I just called my head coach, made sure we got all cleared with the compliance through our compliance, had to get confirmed through NCAA again, which obviously, like, Roosevelt, we're, we're in, like, double-checking everything right now because we're in the provisional period. Yeah, still, oh, so yeah. Got to make sure. I'm Googling everything, reading through the bylaws, and it's like, I'm looking at paths, but <laughs> Like, I'm like, I'm not messing with my eligibility on this. I'm like asking the coach on the staff that I already knew. Yeah, I'm like, oh, then other college guys. I'm like, it's got cleared by other colleges. I'm good. It's so since it's sponsored by, and it's technically amateur games, and it's sponsored by the Paralympic and Olympic Committee. Okay. It was okay. So it, it falls under Olympic classification. Really? That. I didn't know that. Because there's no Olympic equivalent of football besides yeah. this. So it's like hand in hand with USA football. Holy shit. I had no idea. That's actually, that's really sweet. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Cause you have the whole amateurism kind of idea that's now being thrown out the window because now we're talking about potentially. Like, yeah. I mean, you have guys trying to figure a lot out. <laughs>